our invited guests on behalf of Kata Stories. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to this special webinar. I'm Manu, your host for the evening. And, uh, you know, uh, International Day of People with Disabilities, IDPWD, as it is popularly known. It started in 1992 with the only objective of making our abilities much more stronger than our disabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, our aim to conduct this webinar is to increase awareness, understanding and acceptance in the mainstream for specially gifted people. And the agenda is to understand and accept this fact that we all are unique and blessed with one quality or other. And with this, let me invite the very first speaker for the evening. Let me invite Ms. Nawal Akram. Nawal is a disability rights activist. She's a youth advocate for education above all. And according to BBC 2017 survey, she's one of the 100 influential female and inspirational leaders in the world. So can we have on screen Ms. Nawal Akram, please? And she would like to talk about disability rights, our human rights. Ms. Nawal on screen. Hi everyone. Hey Anu, thank you for having me, and I'm really glad to be uh, to be here. Um, sorry, one. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Is something uh, like uh, something happened? Um, no but Go yeah. Ahead. So that's basically it. So. Um, I think most of you know that I started at a very young age. I started at 14 years old um, advocating. And this was a time in Doha that um, people with disabilities were not really talked about. Now, I've been on a wheelchair since I was 12 years old. I'm born with muscular dystrophy. But I ended up uh, requiring using a wheelchair when I was 12. So the beginning of my life, I had an invisible disability. So. When I was walking, people could see something is wrong, but they didn't know. So uh, they would automatically judge from that invisible disability. Uh, and that really show, gave me two perspectives of life. So that gave me a chance to live not being on a wheelchair and having a disability that no one knows is a disability, right? So I see both sides of life and I think both parts are equally as hard. Um, one of the things with the UN this year is that they do want to highlight more of the invisible disabilities this year. And putting both of these perspectives together, what I realized that we need an education system that does highlight historically people with disabilities contributing to art, science, um, to the cultural field. Um, people with disabilities have existed throughout history. Even great philosophers had disabilities, even musicians had disabilities. Then Beethoven, who created the world's most known symphony, was actually deaf when he created it. He was born without a disability, but even when he became deaf, he still had the same mindset and the same talent, regardless of the disability, to continue. Um, Frida Kahlo was a world-known, uh, renowned artist, right? So um, even though she's a known artist around the world, correct? But people don't realize all of her art was actually created and inspired from her disability. So majority of times we, the, the disabled community have, has given back so much back uh, into the society. But I think in all these times people forget to acknowledge that we are part of this community and that when this community is given the right resources, we are able to give back to our full potential. Um, with this year, every year I launch a new campaign um, or I stick to one thing. So with the pandemic, when it happened, uh, what it made me realize a lot of the governmental changes now regarding to COVID, let's see with the pandemic, uh, medical systems and the education system came together to find a solution so everyone could get their education, correct? Um, and this showed that governments and sectors um, and everyone, cultural, educational, or political, um, can actually work together to find solutions if they really cared. And now 
this showed me that with the pandemic, that when it comes to people with disabilities globally, um, now um, it showed me that these legal changes can happen. Now, this only requires uh, the same energy, uh, treating it like a pandemic, basically. We need to treat people with disabilities issues like a pandemic. And this way we can have more urgent results um, and more collaborations of governments and sectors together, right? With the COVID, when, the, when they were now, even though there is one vaccine that just rolled out in the UK, um, different vaccines are coming together and very fast because governments are working together. And I think with the same thing, uh, with people with disabilities issues in education and laws, and a working environment, we need, we need to treat it like the urgency. So now this year, I, I wanted to launch the Equal Access uh, uh, QA campaign. It's a campaign for the region, but it starts in Doha. So hence I put the QA inside. But the main thing uh, that is very important, I think, for the Middle East region and for the, a the South Asia region, that um, we do need um, now due to climate change and the global south, there's a lot of floods happening that does cause um, disabilities from conditions um, due to um, bacteria being spread and vaccinations not being uh, available. And in the Middle Eastern region, uh, what we've been seeing is a political climate due to wars that does create preventable disabilities, wars and famine. Now in the 10, 20 years, there'll be people with disabilities migrating around these countries that will have disabilities and they should be able to contribute economically and politically to the countries they move in, move into or are in. So it's to encourage innovation and development of the educational and work sectors so we can economically contribute to our best abilities. This will be overall good for business, good for government economic se sectors, and able to also push competition for more innovation in the region. And I think this is what is very needed that um, we bring a new perspective, right? People with disabilities, the way we uh, use services, the way we interact with society, we bring our own perspective, which is beneficial, not only morally, but also economically. So in both sides, it's, it's beneficial for everyone. Um, so this is what I wanna do with the campaign. Um, I think they're able to bring up slides. Um, so I can also share my own screen if you want. Uh, I don't mind doing that. Um, can I share my own screen? And just try that, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, I can. One minute. Uh, okay, no. Um, but basically what I'm doing with this campaign, um, mm -hmm. I'm highlight. sorry, yes. Uh, everything okay? Fine. Seems like. Okay. Um, the, so the main thing with the campaign it is for the Middle Eastern region. And uh, one of the things with the campaign that I'm doing, I'm highlighting the stories of different disabled people around the world. So this is in the Middle Eastern region and Doha, there's Maryam Al Mullah. She's a very known renowned artist um, who graduated from Qatar University. Uh, her work will be hosted by UNESCO in France. Um, that was hopefully coming, I think this year or next year, it's, but they signed a closing deal so it's highlighting those stories of these people working in these different fields and how they contribute to society. It's aiming to show their capabilities and to show what, what are they contributing, what are they up to. Uh, representation is very important. If you've seen media really affects the way we view disability. So um, in the past, um, let's say in, in the 60s and 50s, Disabilities were shown more as either something scary or something to be pitied on. And these two, view, these two views uh, are still used to, to, to this day in media, which affects the way we view it. So the way we view it is uh, 
scary or something to be pitied upon. And to change that mindset is to start representing disabled people as normal people who are working, who are in the, in the art field, political field, work field, they're everywhere in these fields and to represent them. And the more we represent and show them as normal people, we are, but you know, media, it affects the way we see everything, right? Media affects the way we choose a political party, the way we choose cultural, you know, it, it really does affect us. And it's getting people to be intellect and think for themselves and, and to view and to uh, educate themselves also that everything is possible if we work together. The more we separate, the more we divide each community, um, it's easier to disrupt and not get the best income and uh, best outcome, sorry, for everyone. Um, and I think this is the main thing with my whole thing, you know, disabled rights and human rights. And at the end of the day, it affects everyone. Uh, in every sector, whether it's educational, medical, cultural, or political, it affects everyone. At the end of the day, uh, my stance is that for the development of the world and for a country, they need to integrate their disabled people so they can be independent themselves financially and um, confidently integrate uh, and do daily tasks. Because at the end of the day, this will be better for the country's uh, the country will have less um, people relying on charity because they cannot integrate. So at the end of the day, those resources could be used to develop the country. But at the moment, the way countries are done, uh, we are not, um, you know, physically, yes, we have less capabilities, but we're not a burden. We're only seen as a burden because the society makes us one. So the society provided us all of the tools uh, to accommodate us, we would we could contribute uh, in a better manner, um, and that's my stance on this. Uh, I had five minutes. I think I went over, but that's it. Thank you so much. Truly, truly agree, and you know, I think yes, this is what is required. As I mentioned in the beginning, you know, we all are uniquely gifted. It's just that we need to identify and our society needs to accept it. Thank you so much, Nawal. It was a pleasure having you. And ladies and gentlemen, with this, uh, let's move on to our uh, next speaker, who is actually a rock star, Mr. Abdul Rahman Aliafi. He's a Paralympic star and ambassador for Accessible Qatar, a CESOL initiative. And when I talk about uh, Mr. Abdul Rahman, so he would like to talk about challenges specially able sports people face and role of sports federation in supporting them, which is very, very important. So can we have on screen, Mr. Abdul Rahman Aliafi, please. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank Wa you for assalam. inviting uh, me in this uh, meeting. Actually, this is my pleasure to me, uh, meet with you. Uh, actually, I want to speak actually first in uh, my uh, uh, how to how I had the accident, like uh, how I came uh, disabled. Uh, this is 2004. I had an accident 2004. I, I wasn't, I was 20 years old. Uh, I didn't imagine that one day that I will be in uh, wheelchair uh, because nobody imagined himself in wheelchair. Uh, so I, uh, I want to be able to, to imagine with me that uh, you don't know when you will be in wheelchair. Uh, that's why uh, anytime I request and I go, uh, Alhamdulillah, I, I go on TV and uh, Qatar, uh, Qatar TV many time. I go on uh, Rayyan TV uh, many time also. Uh, Sometimes requesting uh, the need of uh, special people handicap uh, and sometime to uh, the of, uh, get medals in uh, Olymp in uh, Gulf uh, medals in some competition or something. Uh, sometime I, I go, I tell my story, how accident happened to uh, with me. Uh, so I was, I then uh, I have many, many uh, competitions. I have many also TV show. I have many meetings. Uh, uh, 
around uh, requesting people uh, to uh, respect disabled. Don't just uh, feel uh, sad when you see him. He can. We can do whatever you can do, just in different way. Uh, this is uh, what. I, this is the message that I want to everybody know. This there is no difference between us. Just small uh, ways different. How you can do this one and how I can uh, do this one. Uh, I compete uh, like. Uh, with this, uh, will, uh, with the Qatar Olymp Olympic Committee, uh, starting from 2004, because I had accident 2000. Uh, uh, I have 2004. I had the accident. 2006. I start with the Qatar Olympic Committee. Uh, I had until now uh, more than 14 to 15 medals, uh, different uh, uh, like gold medals and bronze. I have in short wood, javelin, uh, table tennis. Uh, this is what, what I get. This is the sport. Then I just start with the hand bike to have new experience with a new uh, game. Uh, as ambassador, I, uh, I have budget. I request this uh, hand bike for uh, two hand bike. Uh, for uh, all athletes uh, and all disabled people they can use, not only for me. So, uh, and this is the second year for me and as an ambassador and because of uh, COVID-19, you know, there is many things uh, stop and the budget for this year, they not uh, released, not yet released. Uh, but inshallah, if released, I will have another uh, uh, game to make it for public uh, disabled. Uh, we, uh, this is what Nawal say all together to get uh, our uh, what we want. Uh, actually, you are, she's right because uh, if, if disabled request, they're needed they will not uh, get it uh, because everyone when he uh, requests his need he will get but he will uh, should uh, he should make big big uh, effort to get uh, the need but if other people requesting uh, their uh, need of disabled they will get it more than uh, more than they request because that's why when doctors, when uh, uh, media uh, requesting the needs of uh, our need, this will be more uh, affected, uh, more faster than uh, if we request this one. Because actually, I start requesting this many things, not only things. Uh, some some of them is done actually when I face some people face to face, like uh, many think they fix it, uh, like so well, if I want to, uh, uh, the mudir of, uh, the manager of Sogwagif, I request him before, before this is long time. When I had accident, I was so active in 2006 and seven and eight. I told him there's no barking for handicap and this one, they made the barking after uh, like, uh, after they made the barking, then I came to them. I said, okay, you make the barking, thank you, but you don't make a space between all the barking. So I, if I bark here, I should go around the last. Then they fix it again also. Uh, I, I I request many things and I cannot remember all, all of them, but I, I was in also CNAQ, uh, College of North Atlantic. I was athlete there. Uh, from to, uh, 2006, I think, until 2010, like this, or uh, less, 2008. Three years I uh, stayed there. And uh, they fixed many things for me, actually. They make rams, they make electronic doors. Uh, it wasn't there. I requested, and they do it for me, actually, because 
they helped me and they told me, I told them, this is not only for me. If you fix it now, it will help me now and will help other people in future. This always, always when I request anything, I request not only for me, I request for, uh, for other, other disabled in, in the future. Uh, I think uh, now she was with us when we go to a museum and we told them the there is many mistakes in the museum uh, for disabled, uh, how to enter, how to uh, get the places, how to see the pictures, how to do, see this. So, uh, and I don't know, I think they fix my, some of them and uh, some of uh, some of them. Uh, actually, Alhamdulillah, now, I, now in the media, there is many people also, they are active and they are requesting our needed and uh, these things. One of them, Nawal, I know she's very active. And uh, Ahmed and Abdullah, and Abdullah. there is many, many people, they are active uh, and they are requesting the needs of uh, handicap. Uh, I don't know what, uh, what you want me to say more? Actually, I, I uh, because I, I have uh, many things to share with you guys. <laughs> and thank you. For thank sure. You. <laughs> and no, no, it was a pleasure having you, Mr. Abdul Rahman. Uh, this, this was the whole objective of conducting this webinar that, you know, because of uh, media through our platform, we wanted to convey this message that you are an essential part of our society and what best can be done, it should be there. But uh, thank you so much. The way you are creating a path for uh, all others, it is truly, truly very inspiring. Thank you thank so you. much. So ladies it. and gentlemen, this was, uh, thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, with this, now we have to move on to our next speaker because unfortunately, you know, we are we are on a very strict timeline. And uh, let's welcome Mr. Uh, Mahantesh GK who is an advisory board member to the Chief Commissioner for Persons with Disabilities in India, who is working closely with Government of India, and also the President of the World Blind Cricket Association for the Blind in India. So can we have Mr. Mahantesh on screen, please? Yes, sir. Good evening. How are you doing? Uh, very well. Good evening. Uh, you hear me well? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anu. Thank you so much uh, for having me, uh, Mr. Bala and team. Uh, it's truly, truly my pleasure to be a part of this. A fantastic initiative. Let me first congratulate you all and uh, seeing all of you so much uh, uh, concerned about all of us. So I think I should be talking about the challenges uh, persons with disability face, especially from sports point of view mm -hmm. and what we as a federation are trying to uh, resolve that or mitigate, right? Exactly, yes. Go ahead, yes. please. Yes, especially in underdeveloped and developing countries like ours, sports itself is last option mm -hmm. or least option for any person for that matter. And who cares about sports for disability? People with disability themselves go through a lot of hardships, challenges. So sports, you, can, you can't even imagine anybody thinking about their interest. But slowly, slowly, a few sports in India and globally are evolving to support the needs of persons with disability. I'm going to limit my talk to Cricket for the Blind, as you rightly introduced me the president mm -hmm. of World Blind Cricket, which I held this post till 28th of November this month, this year. Congratulations. So I completed two terms, so yeah, thank you. So I, I finished my terms and uh, my friend from Pakistan has again taken over from me. Um, I continue to hold the president post for India and continue to play a very active role globally. So cricket for the blind, in subcontinent is a religion for everybody and blind people, no exception, six, six. So from childhood, I personally enjoyed listening to cricket commentary 
because those days only radio commentary was uh, very prominent tv was just coming in therefore it made no difference to me and my friends because we all had to listen to cricket commentary so cricket commentary was so descriptive i could understand and imagine what was happening on the ground so this interest continued and then tv came in lot of my friends started explaining what was happening then i joined the blind school there we introduced the game and in 1990 when cricket for the blind uh, was formalized with certain modification on ram bowling metal wickets uh, three different categories for uh, the team um, four b ones that are totally blind three b twos partially blind and four b threes partially sighted so this is the composition of the team so what i could see as a player it was fantastic i could completely forget about my disability i never felt i was blind and disabled because it was all played by ourselves as it progressed i stopped playing in 94 1994 and then started organizing along with then uh, team the the confidence it gave the leadership it built and the physical fitness it built in uh, visually impaired community all those who played cricket was fantastic but not everybody get the chance to play uh, whichever schools and craze they could play so i can talk on and on uh, <laughs> how, yeah how how much um, people with visually impaired are denied of opportunities but we as a federation i personally realized if you have a systematic platform if you have a committed team to run it impartial with passion uh, you can do wonders in india about 30 states we are we are 30 plus states 30 states are affiliated to cricket association for the blind in india so we as a sports federation for the blind we have done exceedingly well to support visually impaired to play the game at all levels from school to uh, young adults uh, we are planning to start it for veterans and we did a start for women cricket also for the blind girls last year so we want to regularize it and even globally we want to promote women cricket for the blind so though we are not getting uh, regular funding from government uh, also no funding from bcci our passion talking to various corporates various uh, philanthropists we are able to keep this game alive we are able to keep this game growing we are able to make a difference in hundreds and thousands of blind cricketers india has won four world cups two t20s and four, two odis uh, fortunately beating our arch rivals pakistan it made all the more popular in the country tv channels uh, aired it live honorable prime minister invited indian team and felicitated twice our honorable prime minister modi ji president of india both pranab mukherjee and also uh, our uh, kovin ji invited the team and felicitated the victory of india indian blind cricket team was spoken in the parliament so our ex captain got a padma shri one of the highest civilian award and many of our cricketers who represented their states and played for the country state government gave them jobs cash prizes was given to them some of our cricketers became celebrities they were united for tv shows like this we could make a lot of difference so very committed sports federation can do wonders but unfortunately most feder- most sports federations for disabled in india and uh, elsewhere i see I, i don't want to kind of uh, name any particular organization they lack that commitment certain people hang on to the position they don't allow young blood to come and they don't uh, encourage sports in the right earnest perspective so but committed sports federation can do wonders but we can do more is what i always believe so i definitely i i would like to conclude uh, uh, i know uh, we will be happy if 
Qatar mm-hmm. story mm-hmm. can help us to reach visually impaired community of Qatar so that we can encourage blind people in Qatar. There may be many Asians and uh, uh, kid playing country, uh, people's uh, kids with blindness. They will definitely have a lot of interest in the game. So uh, Cricket Association for the Blind in India and World Blind Cricket will be more than happy to help them uh, to play the game. We don't mind sending our coaches, train them. And we love to have a team from Qatar in the days to come. Once again, my big thanks. And I wish everyone a very happy uh, International Day of the Persons with Disability. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you indefinitely because, you know, this is what the whole objective of organizing this webinar is to bridge the gap. And uh, let's be very much positive and hopeful that uh, in near future, let's hope that we can do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, with this, let me invite one of the most honorable community member here in Qatar, Dr. Mohan Thomas, who is Chairman, Advisory Council, Indian Community Benevolent Fund, which is popularly known as ICBF, who is a member, Advisory Council, Indian Doctors Club, and founder Chairman for Birla Public School. Dr. Thomas would, lo- would like to talk about the theme for this year, which is Building Back Better Towards a Disability, Inclusive, Accessible, and sustainable post-COVID-19 world. Welcome, Dr. Thomas. How are you doing? Pleasure to have you. Thank you, Anu, for inviting me, my fellow speakers, ladies and gentlemen. As you all know, the International Day of Disabled Persons is celebrated by the world since 1992 on this day. By a proclamation, the United Nations General Assembly declared this day. It is basically to promote the rights and well-being of persons with disabilities of all spheres of society and bring bring them to development and to increase the awareness of the situation of these people with disabilities in every aspect of political, social, economic, and cultural life. Disability inclusion is an essential condition to upholding human rights for sustainable development peace and security. It is also a central to the promise of the 2030 Agenda for sustainable development to leave no one behind. The commitment of realizing the rights of a person with disabilities is not only a matter of justice, it is an investment in common future. Disabled people are not alone in the world. Out of the 7 billion people, more than 1 billion people are disabled. One in every seven people. More than 100 million disabled persons are children. And children with disabilities are, are, are almost four times more susceptible for violence than the non-disabled people. 80% of all people with disabilities are living in developing countries. 50% of the disabled persons cannot afford healthcare. 180 countries have ratified the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Seven targets of the Sustainable Development Goals explicitly refer to persons with disabilities. The global crisis of COVID-19 is deepening with the pre-existing inequalities, exposing extent of exclusion and highlighting the work of the disability inclusion is crucial. Even under normal circumstances, persons with disabilities are less likely to get access to healthcare, education, employment, and to participate in the community. It has been a trying time during the COVID-19 in taking care of our disabled brothers and sisters. During this pandemic period, it has been noticed that there are more disabled people likely to live in poverty and experience higher rate of violence, neglect, and abuse. Promoting inclusion for these persons with disabilities means recognizing and protecting their rights. They have the right for every aspect of life, the right to go to school, to live in one's community, to access healthcare, to start a family, to engage in political participation, play sport, to travel, and to have a 
decent work. As uh, we, as the world recovers from the pandemic, we must ensure that the aspirations of the rights of these people are protected and taken care of. Qatar is significantly a signatory to the United Nations Convention on the rights of disabled persons and is working to ensure that Qatari laws and courts are in alignment with that. Many major steps have been taken by the Qatar government to take care of the disabled. In 1990, it constituted Shafalla Institute to oversee the accessibility, accommodation, and integration of people with disabilities into sectors of all Qatari life, including education, employment, transportation, and healthcare. The Supreme Council of Information and Communication Technology, the ICT Qatar, took a major step towards ensuring all of Qatar experiences, the full benefits of technology today with the introduction of the Qatar's first e-accessibility policy in 19, 2011. This policy gives equal access to the disabled to enrich their lives to give accessibility to every service in the country. Accessible Qatar is the region's first smartphone application and website that provides validated and crowdsourced, crowdsourced information, all facilities, now, all facilities in Qatar. The Doha International Conference on Disability and Development in December 2019 concluded with 11 recommendations. Qatar Foundation for Social Work launched the Doha Declaration at the closing ceremony. The Doha Declaration is an action-oriented approach that Qatar hopes to, that will be a, a referral point for all the countries in the world to integrate the rights of the persons with disabilities into their national developing programs. It underscores Qatar's commitment to be inclusive policy to provide greater opportunities for people with disabilities. Under the patronage of Her Highness Sheikh Amosa bin Nasser, the UN Charter to advance peace, justice, and human rights for all the disabled people of the world are highlighted. The conference took a note on some of these points to combat structural barriers causing the exclusion of persons with disabilities. To establish a large scale awareness, raising campaigns, promoting disability rights, using the voice of persons with disabilities and the key delivery by them. Stress the implementation of social policy and development, including the, including the developing nations and bring in strategies for that to promote full and active participation and representation of all persons with disabilities in societies and in all policies and programs with representation of all persons with disabilities as leaders, active citizens and active agents and change the community, country, internationally, thus reaffirming the principle of nothing about us without us, nothing about us without us to ensure that, per, that persons with disabilities are not excluded from the education system, including disability friendly environment and facilities as well as assisting technologies. To promote productive rights and accessibility to reproductive health services to persons with disabilities, ensuring that they have the same needs, securing their full potential and recognizing their rights to acknowledge the role of the families in, in the well-being of the person with disabilities and empower family members, emphasizing commitment on providing persons with disabilities. To invest in monitoring and evaluating the progress towards social policy and development for persons with disabilities. So Qatar has taken a lot of steps and a lot of organization to make the life of disabled people align with the society and give them a stature in the, in the country. 
today, the special day for the disabled people, let us take an oath that there is nothing about them without them. Let us include them. Thank you. True, very true. And very rightly said that there is nothing without them. We have to, in fact, this is what I'm saying that it's not about we have to, they are, you all are a very, very important part of this society. And, you know, I think this journey would be much more beautiful, much more easy when we'll walk together. Thank you so much, Dr. Thomas, for all of these beautiful insights. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up on your screen is another sports champ, I would say. He's Mr. Mark Karma, Indian para badminton star. Mr. Mark, welcome to the webinar. Welcome to Kata Stories. How are you doing? Tell us something inspiring from your journey. Yes, uh, I can definitely tell you. Uh, hi, friends. My name is Mark Dharmai. And first of all, thanks to uh, Balkrishna and Shah to you for inviting me for this web webinar. And I'm so sorry I'm traveling right now, so I know there will be a lot of disturbance. I'm traveling for my so, so I think talk about myself, about disability is true uh, fact. Actually, I'm a dual person. I've been born and grown up from a fisherman uh, family. I had a lot of struggles in life. And people think like disability is like you know, smoking, like they don't treat us well. So, when my journey was a very difficult thing, like it was very a uh, roller coaster drive for myself. And one thing, the commitment that I had was my parents who always supported me. And with their support, and I say, Jesus who supported me, who took me to a good career. And I didn't expect that I would reach at this level. And so far, to do a lot of struggles in life, I have achieved my goal in life, being an international fire battle player. And people, people think that we are like, you know, we are like aliens. Because people, when they see us, they always mock at us. And a lot of unnecessary things come in life, but I never stop back. I never look back. I always kept on keeping movement on top so that you know, so that nobody says anything about me. And you know how people do recognize me who I am. So frankly, if you say in India, people think like we we are like uh, we are like God for them. We have a family maybe. It may be a poor family or middle class whoever. People don't treat us properly. But now things have changed. Now people do think who we are, and we are people who have done many things in life. It's not that we cannot do, we can do. And when they see at us, when they when people see at us, they be amazed. Wow, this, this person can do so much. Why not? So yeah, that's the reason. So basically, social media and many things have come forward, and now this really is being changed. It's not like what it was in the past. So I. so much that was really and the best part is that you know no matter whatever challenges were there in your life you decided to move on you decided to deal, handle all of them with grace and courage so yes that's what that's what a true sportsman is all about ladies and gentlemen let's move on and uh, coming up on your screen is a medico is a medico uh, who's working in the rehab department of Qatar Hamad Medical Corporation since 2005 he's a seasoned professional with 30 years of rich and uh, qualitative experience in medical consultation clinical management mentoring research and development in the field of physical medicine and rehab acting chairman of PMR department from December 2018 to October 2019 and is working as a senior consultant of PMR department Hamad Medical Corporation on your screen Please welcome Dr. Loganathan. Welcome, Doctor. How are you doing? Fine. How oh, yeah, it can come? Yes, Doctor. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. 
Good evening. I am very thankful to cut the story to invite me to participate in this webinar. Very important and very essential topic. Uh, they gave me uh, the overview of the uh, road accident and the disability. This is a very good topic. Uh, actually, uh, what I have taken uh, in our uh, rehab department, how patient uh, receiving and how we are handling the cases during the COVID period and what we have achieved. This is what I want to uh, deliver so, to our people. So normally see. the uh, road accident will cause the victims. There are three types of uh, disability will occur. One is uh, brain injury. The second mm -hmm. one, brain injury with skeletal injury, that is fracture neck, fracture uh, other limbs, like fracture hip bone like that. Then other one, only uh, fracture of the skeletal, that is all the limbs only. So these th the three types have different disability for the patient. And they will, uh, during the COVID time, when they had an accident and admitted there in acute care, they will all go for a PCR test. And those who are having a negative, they will be quarantined for a period. After the PCR test negative, then they will transfer to our rehab institute. Okay. So once we have received them in, uh, our patient, we will uh, assess them and uh, according to the, their uh, disability, they, we have uh, standard uh, international standard tools which apply and uh, make a disability, what is the disability? Like suppose, for example, I am telling, for there is a, if there is any cognitive problem for after brain injury, we will assess the range level of having those cognitive function. This will give how the people are in a status of control, whether they are respond or they are locally respond or they are agitated like that they have. According to that, uh, we will give the treatment. So, second, another one, they have a brain injury that what I told, plus they have a fracture, they fracture lip hip or fracture uh, lower bone and the upper uh, upper limb bone they'll have they they will they have a different they have a long time in the uh, TICU so they will get uh, that is very challengeable for when they are coming for the uh, rehabilitation because they don't have uh, they don't uh, follow the our command they will not understand and what happened they are not mobilized so what happened, they will develop another complication is critical care myopathy. So the um, this critical care myopathy is uh, apart from the accident, but normally these people will get more uh, muscle weakness and uh, it's very challengeable to improve their functional ability. Then another one is the pure uh, fracture side. That will be very easy for the rehabilitation because they have a uh, no problem with the cognitive function. They will uh, follow our commands and they will understand the disability. In this three category, we have uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, all the, the um, rehab management, we will have the uh, scheduled because uh, we have to uh, prevent the infection also. For the, that time, the COVID time, it was very critical period because we have, to, we have to make complete contact, uh, isolated. So what happened in the therapy uh, segment in the, the physiotherapy or occupational therapy department, the patient will be only limited. Only two or three patients only will go there and they, they will do the, with, the, with uh, the therapist will wear the protective equipment completely as like that. Then they will uh, give the plan of care of the therapist. Right? And then they will go. So, and also, we are very restricted the visitors also. We will allow uh, only limited visitors. They will go only 15 minutes only in the time. Then they have to come very good. And also our, uh, our uh, staffs, even our medicals, uh, doctors and nurses and the cleaners, all they have been taught to how to behave in the COVID test. So by which... In our QRI, there is very minimal uh, corona, COVID positive, also. maybe one or three only. That also initial stage. After that, 
maybe a uh, maybe uh, uh, april may one after that because of strict addition of the social distancing and the uh, hand hygiene and protective everything there is no covid uh, in positive our patient in the patient in our rehab so what happen after the uh, reach we almost uh, we will give the program for uh, the eight weeks program and in that we will work on the physiotherapist occupation therapy speech language and uh, other orthotic all the rehab team will work and to improve his maximum function that is near normal function that is our goal if the patient is having a problem with the uh, um, cognitive improve the cognitive function improve their uh, expression and participate in the program then uh, once the patient is uh, bed bound we will improve his uh, get up from the bed and uh, transfer from the bed to wheelchair then wheelchair to uh, uh, walking this is the our uh, process so it will take normally 8 weeks if their patient is uh, very uh, more uh, disabled i mean disabled or more injured they will give 12 weeks program so uh, once they reach the near normal uh, life uh, functional activity uh, uh, mainly we will work for the uh, activities of daily life, living and self care activity these are all very important we will concern to improve the only when they reach the minimum level only we will discharge till that we will keep the patient to do to improve that one. once they are uh, improved then we will go for the discharge plan, plan and then the community integration we uh, community after community integration we will follow the, in the outpatient uh, clinic and uh, we will follow the, the complete uh, their uh, progress if there is anything uh, suppose for example uh, the patient have a paraplegic due to the uh, due to uh, tra- tra- traffic accident if you have a a fracture in the uh, spine and he had developed we will give uh, we, we will give the follow up and we will see the what are the other complications and follow up and if there is anything we will readmit and for uh, teaching for example they have a, normally they will have bladder problem or bowel problem so bladder uh, tra- training even that if there is anything we will admit readmit and improve the um, Uh, bladder function and uh, bowel function and uh, we will teach them how to uh, utilize in, in the when they are when they are in the community life this is the our co- this is the, our the, our uh, process from the admission other uh, after the accident after the, after they are uh, spend their acute period and they are um, come to the rehabilitation and uh, enter into the country can community this is the our uh, katar rehab this is the one, katar rehab is the uh, 200 bed uh, hospital have a multi all uh, sophisticated uh, equipment and have uh, it is a uh, one of the specialized facility in the katar that's great thank you so much for this wonderful presentation dr loganathan and i think whatever you are doing it is very much important not just for the physical healing but for the mental healing for the emotional healing and to bring back that confidence that yes you know they are not dependent on anybody at the toughest time of their life they can manage at least the basics at their own and with their loved ones thank you so much dr loganathan so ladies and gentlemen coming up on screen is uh, another sports person who is the captain indian national blind cricket team mr ajay reddy welcome mr ajay reddy how are you doing tell us how it all started in your life when you decided that you know you have to bounce back thank you thank you so much for this you know great initiative especially on this occasion you know as actually uh, as mahanti sir said he is my mentor i can say he is my guru i learned many things from him you know in crucial time also sometimes i used to think you know i can't you know focus on game i can't focus on my you know job and all but you know after his commitment to towards you know society and uh, cricket uh, uh, that kind of you know commitment sometimes that give me more support more you know encouragement uh, but coming to my career you know i started cricket uh, at my my age of 16 years 
to play state after that you know to play india 2010 from 2010 to till still i am playing for country you know i played four world cups you know i was a captain for two world cups i was the vice captain for two world cups you know apart from this you know cricket achievements personally you know uh, being a visually impaired person uh, because of sports i improve i learn many things from sports uh, physically how to you know maintain our fitness levels how uh, how should be you know maintain our health condition good along with that you know how to communicate with others uh, more over you know how to overcome uh, this pain normally without sports you know before entering this field i used to you know think about my blindness only every day why this thing happens to me and like this after enter in this field i never think definitely this is gift gift for me Uh, you know being a visually impaired uh, you know I, i got a chance to play for country you know try to am along with my team i am bringing laureates to country that is more enough if i am normal maybe i don't know i can do i can't do these things but still you know because of sports especially cricket you know i improved my confident levels along with that you know uh i learn this thing how to communicate with others being a captain i have to communicate communicate with others along with the leadership qualities you know it's not uh, easy to maintain uh, 17 members in the ground it's very difficult still i am able to manage along with that you know uh, i am uh, every time ready to accept the views this is the more important thing you know every time we should not i don't know go for our views we have to accept views like society how society they used to think you know after accepting that view we have to go as per our right stand that is the things i learned from cricket exactly uh, i can say one more thing you know especially differently able people sports is you know if you enter in uh, sports field you can you can understand how to tackle with society along with that how to tackle with failures how to handle success situation and all because you know visually impaired person you know it's very difficult to overcome that uh, pain but after you know your success uh, one level again people should not think i am this i am that and they should not think like that but uh, uh, being a sports person uh, i am really happy you know because of sports uh, entire differently able community last 5 uh, uh, to 6 years they are doing wonders especially in india we are also getting uh, recognition how you know normal people they are getting but at least we are getting something that is we are very happy they are also you know considering as previously 1990s uh, differently able means you know they are people they won't think they are the part of society now things become change in differently able community also uh, uh, many people they have become you know uh, ias ifs and uh, many international awards in uh, different various i am really happy i am really blessed with this challenge thank you so much thank you so much mr ajay and i think the most important thing which is required in life is having a positive attitude because if you ask me then i would say the biggest disability in life is having a negative and a bad attitude so it was a pleasure talking to you and so happy that you know you are spreading those positive vibes god bless keep growing ladies and gentlemen after this our next speaker is someone who is a certified nlp and process communication model trainer he is the founder of ecdelo and when i am saying this then uh, let me tell you that he has served india's multinational pharmaceutical companies for good 35 years after that he decided to move on and uh, he trains and coaches corporate leaders now he established an organization called uh, ecdelo and he is certified for nasa developed process communication model and is also a nlp master practitioner so let's welcome mr behnoor rao welcome mr behnoor how are you doing 
Thank you, Anuji, for the introduction and good afternoon to all of you. It is indeed my honor to be here among all of you high achievers. For the privilege of being on this panel, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Sudeep Sonavne, the editor of The Futurist, for inviting me on behalf of Qatar Stories, director Mr. Balaji Nair, and co-founder Anu Sharma to share my thoughts on the International Day of People with Disabilities. Thank you once again. Pleasure. Pleasure. It's a total pleasure for us. Welcome. Uh, I remember visiting Qatar some years back, and I know it is the home to some of the world's most prestigious events. The Qatar Open, the MotoGP, the World Athletics Championships you had last year. And of course, we are eagerly awaiting the upcoming FIFA World Cup in 2022. And today we have yet another prestigious event hosted by Qatar, this uh, webinar on the International Day of People with Disabilities. So you mentioned my work in the pharmaceutical sector over three decades. Yes, I did uh, have uh, an extensive experience in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, also, we were involved with uh, dealing with disabilities caused by surgeries and amputations due to gangrene and cancer. So our work was mostly in counseling and life coaching uh, for people who are affected and their families, because often uh, the holistic approach is missed of course, we have to focus on the person who's disabled, but also remember they have families too, and they need to be also taken care of. So this was our work, basically. The medical fraternity, uh, we can see uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas, Dr. Loganathan here on this panel were, of course, always at the forefront. Their efforts and sacrifices are laudable. And, uh, but supporting them, there are other people. So I would say that uh, from the perspective of a life coach or a counselor, I would like to talk about uh, overcoming disability and bouncing back emotionally. This is an aspect which we always uh, hope to resolve because the initial information whenever it is received about the disability is received by parents, relatives, guardians, and the persons themselves. And there is a stage one shock, okay? So that shock is what we have to deal with. It's met with numbness and silence as information is too difficult for the brain to process. Stage two is denial, refusal to accept reality. This is not true, this cannot be. So this denial, of course, all people uh, uh, who are involved with this situation know about this. The third stage is anger and resistance, angry with others, angry with everything, angry with the world. As uh, Ajay Reddy just now pointed out, you know, he had this stage in his life where he said, why did this thing happen to me? Yeah. So that also is a stage we go through, uh, people go through. And then finally, they go into depression. So it is finished, no point in living. So this is, these are the four stages which happen very spontaneously. And this is where the support uh, is so important. And uh, very often when the support doesn't happen, uh, the people, they stay in depression for a very long time. And many people with disabilities and their families are in this stage of depression. And then due to survival mode, they end up doing things which are, you know, may lead even to exploitation. For example, in uh, India, for example, many disabled people are used by the society, by their families for begging. Okay, so that's uh, very, very common. So this is where, you know, the society, the civil society, the government bodies, and other organizations play, can play a role to bring them out of this depression and move them towards hope and commitment. So how do they go about that? So that is the question we need to ask ourselves. The first thing is besides support, we need to give them a direction. So everyone has abilities, whether it's disabled or even a differently abled, or even all of us who are not disabled have some strengths and weaknesses. So this self-discovery process is so important where counselors, coaches, and mentors can really help. Providing encouragement is so important, uh, role modeling. We have some great athletes so here on this panel, Ajay is there, and there are others as well. Uh, so these athletes can also provide inspiration for differently able people. And there are high achievers outside athletics, outside sports in various fields of life. And these people can also provide encouragement. And they can be a role model for 
differently abled people who are in a state of repression and their relatives as well. So this is where we are uh, involved in as counselors and life coaches to help the people to come out of this, get breakthroughs, and uh, corporates and government institutions can play a major role by providing the right infrastructure, providing incentives, some reservations, some opportunities for jobs, and in various other ways they can help. So we have to always keep in mind the long-term vision, a holistic approach, and looking forward is the key. Looking forward to the new day with enthusiasm for a bright future and a meaningful livelihood. So I would just like to refer at this point to a Japanese method called as the Ikigai method. Uh, this Ikigai method is, uh, answers four questions. Uh, you can ask the person, what do you love doing? So there'll be answers. The second question is, what are you good at? So everybody is good at something. Somebody is good at cooking. Somebody is good at sports. Somebody is good at speaking. Somebody is good at drawing, painting, and so on. Then what can you be paid for is the other question because you can have all the talent in the world, but at this stage, you need to monetize the talent. So what you can be paid for. So this is where uh, civil society can really help to provide avenues where they can take up meaningful vocations and professions that the world really needs. And the world needs differently abled people today. And this is where it's not just they need us, we need them as well. So for all practical purposes, I think uh, all the people in this world need to work together. As you can see in the logo also, everybody is working hand in hand, civil society, government, corporates, family, and the disabled people themselves. Together, they can make the world a better place. Thank you for your time and patience, and thank you for listening to me. If you have any questions, I'm ready to take them at any time. Thank you, Anu. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Rao. That was so very positive. That was so very encouraging. And you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, the very first reaction or motivation or lesson starts from your parents, from your home. And if we are positive, if we are supportive, then all together we can change the perspective. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now let's move on and let's introduce a wonderful, a beautiful artist to you who paints from her mouth. She's actually very unique. She's none other than Sri Lekha. Hello, Sri Lekha. Welcome. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are you able Great. to hear me? Uh, you know, let me, let me tell our... Yes, yes, we can hear you. Let me tell our viewers that Sri Lekha shared a very beautiful presentation with us. That was uh, her creations. But uh, unfortunately, Sri Lekha, because of some technical issues, we might not be able to play that. And we promise you that, you know, we'll come back with a bigger platform for, a, for your creations. But please tell me how you started your journey. Yeah, first of all, namaste to all. Uh, I started my journey. I'm a born specially able. And uh, after finishing my graduation, I did all my schooling and college, everything uh, did a normal, uh, like uh, how my sister and uh, brother did. My parents uh, have given me same equal opportunity and they never treated me that I'm something differently able. So they never treated me and they taught me from the childhood, from the beginning, they taught me uh, only thing that you can do, whatever you want in life, you can achieve. Wonderful. Entire my family. My family is uh, my backbone. So, and uh, after my graduation, I started uh, painting and my mother is my first teacher. I used to use all her, she's a fabric painter. She used to do uh, color painting on saris. So whenever I get a vacation or any holidays, I used to use her all colors and I used to mix. And I have minimum basic uh, techniques I have learned from my mother. Then later on 2007, I started uh, through Siri Art Institute. It is a very famous institute in uh, Hyderabad. So there I started learning and it was not that easy. When I entered first time, uh, I used to hold brush with mouth, not with hand. I hold brush with mouth and I do painting. So uh, I'm, when I'm I, sure, Sri Lekha, it must be very, very challenging. 
of, of course it is it is because uh, it will be very near to eye vision when you paint with mouth yes. the tangles or whatever uh, maximum our eyes get more effect and more strain everything it will be very tough and uh, with the backbone support i have to bend i have to bend and as i said i am a born disabled it is a orthogryposis multiplex congenita due to this my all my muscles and bones uh, are a uh, little bit uh, i mean uh, not a uh, proper growth improper growth will be there and the strength of muscle will be so less and um, bones also will be so weak so i can't stretch more myself though i do uh, painting with mouth i can't stretch myself so what i used to do i used to reverse the canvas i used to reverse the canvas and do the painting means uh, top uh, whatever top side will be there now i used to flip the canvas i used to make it down and i used to according to my convenient i used to paint and uh, 2007 i started uh, oil painting and uh, when my sir saw me first time he was really shocked because uh, oil painting is very tough to do with mouth it is very tough so that strokes everything where it is very tough so when he saw me he said it is highly impossible so i just requested him give me one chance so that i can show what how can i do so like that i started and uh, after uh, that i completed uh, two stages in this one is landscapes and another one is birds and animals seascape and still i am learning portraits now i am in third stage final stage it is a portrait i think for learning there is no limit it is uh, it is going on process all the time it will be gone so after that uh, my complete life has changed due to my health condition i just uh, uh, on my peak career stage i was completely on bed again for 3 months so after uh, I, exactly my peak career stage it was the 2013 the same time i became a member in uh, infa mouth and foot painting artists association and uh, first time my painting was selected internationally so all, at that time i was completely on bed and uh, i think it was really like a hell i mean uh, completely i was collapsed because till that time i was thinking i can do anything everything is possible but all of sudden my dreams everything has gone so i was completely on bed so even my parents didn't expect that so it was very i mean i had a tough time but later on myself i have a habit i mean uh, what to uh, how to tell uh, if i face any situation or like that uh one hour i i hardly one hour i'll think about that later on i'll change myself and i'll make motive i'll just motivate myself i'll say uh, myself and i'll make i think that i'll take the things uh, i'll start uh, accepting the things and i'll start to focus to how to overcome the situation so like that i have taken good care of my health did all kind of requirements to, to improve my health and after 3 months again i started to sit on wheelchair and within 6 months i started again painting and uh, and after that uh, about infa that mouth and foot painting i just want to tell my life has completely changed after coming to this organization this mouth and foot painting art uh, artist association is a what uh, it is a international organization it was established in 1956 and uh, we have 800 artists all around the world 74 countries oh. and from india we have 30 artists and due to their health condition artists from uh, this organization they paint with mouth and feet some are lying on bed completely bedridden artists also are there in, in our organization and uh, this is a platform to show our unique talent each artist has unique talent and uh, if we earn uh, income uh, through our paintings sale 
by reproduction of making greeting cards, calendars. There are many things. And uh, and uh, first of all, I I would like to thank uh, Qatar Stories for giving me this wonderful opportunity to express my feelings. And uh, and one thing I want to tell through this Qatar Stories, everything is possible in life. Whatever situations or circumstance we face, each and everything uh, is like a lesson. From each situation, we learn some experience, we gain. Each experience, whether it is good or bad, but there will be something to learn from it. And we can overcome all these, whatever, whether it is physical or mental or whatever situation, we can overcome through our positive attitude and our willpower. And many of our artists, artists are, uh, have much talent and uh, we require only the platform. We already have the platform. We require the chance to perform our art talent. If we get through Qatar stories, the more events or the more chance to show our talent, it will be better to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a true, true pleasure, uh, Sri Lekha, believe me. And definitely we will, we will work together in future. More power to you, girl. Keep blooming, keep smiling. Take good care of yourself. Well, that's what, you know, positivity is all about. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to one more female rock star. She's a gold medalist, a power lifter in world Dwarf Games. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Miss Ruhi Shingde. Ruhi, welcome. Welcome to Kata Stories. Welcome to this special webinar. Tell us your journey. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, uh, I would like to thank Kata Stories and Mr. Bala sir and Mr. Anu ma'am for making me a part of this uh, very nice webinar. It's a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm a dwarf person by being a short height. My height is four feet. And uh, today I'm an international para player. I'm really very happy that God has made us disabled, but there is nothing impossible thing in this world that we can prove that, that we are weak, we have no strength, we have no power. But I, I'm feeling now proud to say that being a disabled, I have uh, represented India and not one times, I have represented five times and won a medal for my country. It's really very proud. And uh, by in childhood, I was facing really very uh, that uh, why I am like this, why God has made me like this. But I was always having a support of my family. My father, he's a backbone. Because of his strength and his support, I am what I am today. Uh, I see many people in. Uh, in our countries that there are some uh, families uh, if their child is disabled they don't take care of them they they don't see at them and there are also some people who feel that why we are like this so people are just judging them teasing them saying anything but i would like to say that don't feel bad don't feel shy whatever we are we can show everyone and we are not weak God has made us disabled, but he's also given us some power, some strength that if we have one uh, small uh, weakness, we can we are having 99% another uh, power and strength. And uh, today on this day, I would like to say that uh, we are not uh, disabled by the disability we have. We are able by the ability we have. And I'm really happy that is everyone... Uh, who is uh, would like to play sports? Please say me. I would like to help them, encourage them, and guide them. And uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thanks to you, Ruhi. Thank you so very much. You know, I I really like your smile, the positivity, the way you are saying, and you know, the best part, the confidence you have that yes, you know, you have the motivation, you have the power, you have the capability to help others. And, you know, let, let me tell you that, you know, most of us, we always say that, you know, we keep on cribbing about what is not there. But I think there is no greater disability in our society than the 
the inability to see a person as more so i think one of the strongest messages of today's webinar or from this platform is that what needs to be changed is our perspective you know all of you are are true stars believe you me guys you know sitting with you discussing all these things i'm getting who's bumps seriously i'm feeling honored that i've got this opportunity to discuss to know your stories keep shining keep shining but uh, you know we have some more um now let's introduce one individual who believes in now uh, picking up talent who believes in promoting talent let's have mr shamsir hamza who's director of finance and project international business delegation ibd and who's director address international shamsir welcome welcome to this webinar how are you doing thank you miss anu sharma good evening ladies and gentlemen my name is shamsir hamza i am the director of finance and project international business delegation summit based in doha qatar i would like to thank everyone present here it is an honor to be amongst you today let me quickly start with something that i personally feel needs to be said the word disabled it means of a person having a specific physical or mental condition that limits their movements senses or activities but when someone has different capabilities to the average person why don't we simply call them specially able or differently able i personally prefer the condition that limits their senses or activities still manage to strive hard in this society for that ladies and gentlemen i have nothing but utmost respect for them being a part of this even has truly been informative and i opening in many ways so i would like to thank the sponsor katar stories for inviting me i upon their word to us thank you very much before i leave i would like to say that the human spirit is one of ability determination and courage that no disability can steal away thank you all all the best thank you thank you shamsir very well said no doubt about it and uh, you know another speaker who is coming on your screen right now is a young pharmacist mr namshir badri who is a pharmacist in qatar is uh, is there with us and uh, first of all welcome mr namshir and secondly just just tell us your journey of becoming a pharmacist how you thought of it uh first of all thank you for inviting me for this program uh madam anu sharma and my uh, long friend balachandran nair um uh, actually uh first of all i will thank to my friends my parents who have supported in my life to reach until here actually uh, what i was feeling i was the one Uh, in this disability who has achieved it but when i come to this program i know in various streams in various part of especially in india and qatar there are a lot of people uh, who are working for the uh, disabled people so i am very proud to attend this program that i can see a uh, people in different streams who are disabled and they are not at all achieve something but they are also working for others for me personally uh, as we tell uh, we cannot say that governments or society is not helping for me uh, in my college my degree level i got a chance to uh, work for study a pharmacy it's, it's i got in the disabled quota actually so for example i am i am thanking my country first of all for that second thing um uh, i have learned from my children so for these things and all from my childhood itself my parents supported me my case was it was a spinal muscular atrophy it's a distal type especially weak for the uh, lower arms and the upper arms but uh, my uh, my parents were taking me to the uh, schools they were supporting my friends were supporting 
so all in my school stages college stage, but when I, when it reached to college our conference has increased uh, we are it's 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 quite challenging but it's once we are achieving a stage it's easy to go to other then after all these i have come to qatar the most challenging was i was a pharmacist i was working with a british firm uh, it's it's a british style which there is no chair in outside so when they are interviewing me their most important question was you can work eight towers without city so this was the challenge what i was taken when i was reach here and i told i am ready and i have done a lot of things so these all are my things but it's all are small when i when i compare to the other panelists here and also uh, thanking uh, all of you especially i have seen uh, uh, i had re read about or yesterday I was following the facebook of nawal akram and i can see she was uh, interviewing with bbc she was uh, I, and when i was reading about it's a type of muscular dystrophy so um, there are people uh, in various aspect even i don't know there is a uh physical uh, disability day international physical ability challenge just i was no only last week actually anyway thank you thank you for inviting for me and for also giving all these positive vibes for all the speakers so and also for the katha stories thank you thank you so much mr namshir and you know see you never know what life has got for you but i think if your family is there if your parents are there their unconditional love their support i think that is one of the biggest blessing in this world ladies and gentlemen though it was lovely talking to all of you you all are so beautiful so unique the kind of strength you are giving to the society this is totally commendable but as they say all good things come to an end so before i conclude this session today's session let me invite mr balachandra nayar to come and present word of thanks and yes mr balachandra nair is the director and uh, the founder of katha stories so can we have on screen mr balachandra nair please balaji on you go thank you anu good evening or i would i would thank each and every one who had attended this webinar especially i thank mrs navil akram mr abdul rahman arash rashi Mohan, Dr. Mohan Thomas, Dr. Dr. Mo Mohammad Mohammad Ji K, Ms. Uh, Mark Akram, Dr. Lokneth, Dr. Mrs. Uh, Ruhi, Ms. Mr. Ajay, Ms. Sri Le Sri Lega, Mr. Uh, Shamsi Ram Sa, Mr. Be Ben Hur Rao, Namishi, and special Anu, thank you all for attending this evening for this webinar. Thank you all. Thanks to you, Balaji, and ladies and thank gentlemen, believe me, a big also. thanks. Go ahead, go ahead, Balaji. Thank you all for the listeners. We got a good audience also. Thank you for all yes. the listeners also. Yes, absolutely. You know, Balaji has said it right. That believe me, I'm getting so many messages. So many people have joined in. So many guests were there. So a big thanks to all of you, to all our speakers, to all the guests. And uh, yes, you are the real strength. And you know, without you, we are incomplete. And before we conclude today's session, I I just want to say one thing that you know, um, at times there are situations where life seems very difficult. You know, we we think like you know. we will not be able to survive let's give up and all these negativity you know it comes but however difficult life may seem there is always always something you can do with that and succeed so i think what is more important is having just one positive thought and not giving up at that point of time that's all from now ladies and gentlemen it was a true pleasure to having you all we will hope to see you in person soon sometime till then stay connected if you have anything else do write us and take good care of yourself thank you take care goodbye